Hans Christensen. I'm here the Vice President of DTEC. Uh, DTEC is a 100% owned department of Dubai Silicon Oasis. And what we do is we help startups in many different ways. We, uh, we, have, we offer a lot of courses, uh, learning courses, if it's on blockchain or AI or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and we also provide funding. Uh, and a whole row of other things. As well. So our main objective is to really support startups so they get traction and uh, deliver innovation in Dubai to Dubai government and to other Dubai uh, entities or corporates. And the way we do that is uh, through all the activities that, that we provide. We invest, we accelerate, we provide workshops, and all this in an aggregate is actually helping the startups moving forward in a fast way. Secondly, there is also an element of them simply meeting with like-minded entrepreneurs. And we have found out that they are actually doing quite a lot of business amongst themselves. My goal in my role is simply to create as big an impact as possible and thus I, I try, to go, try to go through multipliers in achieving this goal. Now today uh, uh, I have a whole set of managers that, that is supporting me and uh, so I oversee the, the, the functions uh, of these managers and what we are trying to, to, to do now more and more is to leverage uh, what we have built and make it bigger uh, so that it has a real impact on the economy uh, in, in the UAE. And we are creating a few inroads already. We had CNN come and film us uh, not long ago uh, because uh, they felt we actually contributed to, uh, to the competitiveness report that's done by IMD in Lausanne. Uh, which we're very proud of. That means we are notching ahead in the right direction. Uh, my in my career, I have started up several startups, um, three different continents, but also worked for corporates. But what really motivates me, what gets me out of bed in the morning, is to see the smile on the face of an entrepreneur when I, I know I just helped him in the right direction. He feels it's fantastic for him to receive uh, uh, my advice or advice of some of my colleagues and uh, which simply have saved him tons of time, uh, tons of money even and just set him off in the right direction. That is something that a salary can't give you. That's intrinsic in, in, in motivation for me which gets me up uh, in, uh, in the morning every day. Well, I, I guess to a certain point, I'm a you know smartphone and laptop addict. We cannot live without these uh, technologies today, and I think that's actually going to increase uh, with time. So, uh, using the smart a smartphone uh, in, in in a good way, um, I think is is absolutely uh, paramount. And we also see that there's a whole trend in uh, especially developing market market today. Uh, to do your entire business from your smartphone. Uh, it's packed with technology and as this technology matures, and now I'm talking particularly in, in terms of uh, AI, that would be your personal assistant par excellence going forward. And we see this trend. Uh, I was just talking to one of our startups yesterday who's been doing a lot of number crunching for us. Uh, um, because we have a lot of raw data we need to, to evaluate. And uh, he just teamed up with an AI company and those two together uh, see that they can do so much more when they start combining these maturing uh, technologies. Uh, going forward, um, I, I realized that my smartphone is my personal assistant. And uh, the more the, the artificial intelligence is being developed uh, and catered to my needs, the more I'm going to use it. So I can so answer your question, 
it is becoming increasingly more important, uh, this technology. And I think we are getting closer to a tipping point where uh, we can simply not understand the world without it. And I'm looking very much forward to this because a, a PA, a robot, is never tired, never says no, will always be there for you, and is always fresh and will think faster uh, and a lot more, um, how do you say, can sift through so much more information than you can uh, or I can. And therefore, uh, for me personally, it, it is becoming an absolutely essential tool and technology for my daily work, which is so varied in so many ways. Well, first of all, I, you know, it's, it's super fast. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I, I love uh, the, the camera. Uh, obviously, I don't, I don't uh, use the camera every day, but I do go to many events. And, you know, we benchmark each other against uh, 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 other events. So we do use the camera quite extensively. Also, uh, with documents, if you need to uh, take a picture of a slide or a contract and things like that, uh, very fast. And uh, I noticed that it has a lot of functionalities uh, when you go to a screen, off screen, and you know, that, that's really cool. Uh, what I really uh, also really uh, like is that you can actually have two phones in one. You know? uh, since we're, I'm working for the government, obviously I need two phones. Now I can have two phones in one, which is great. Uh, apart from that, um, now, I haven't tested it extensively yet, but uh, just a little I have I've tested, the AI is phenomenal. I mean, this is a game changer. I, I really feel this is uh, taking a different, uh, uh, going into a different dimension now. If, if I compare the AI uh, with what I have on my other phone, uh, this is a stronger AI. There's, there's just no uh, doubt about that. And uh, as I said, mentioned before, uh, I think uh, AI is going to work more and more like your personal robot, your personal assistant. So if I had to choose, it would be this phone that I'll be using. I need to really divide the time of, of my work. Time is the scarcest resource. So I look very carefully at where I dedicate my time. I can, today I can really not go to an event and say, yeah, I stayed the whole day at this event. That's very seldom. I pick out the nuggets and then I go and see the presentation that I think is the most important and uh, network with the people I need to network. Inside the corporation, I uh, try to limit my, my meetings, empower the people as much as I can. So I simply focus on the, the, the essentials, what I need to do at the level that I am at today. That's very important. Uh, I'm a, uh, not a big fan of micromanagement, uh, but you need to be able to take a deeper dive once in a while just to check everything is running smoothly. And also uh, so that your team knows that you know how the business is, is being operated. That's very, that's very important. But um, in terms of time, um, you know, any technology or device that can help me, uh, you know, optimize my time is very welcome. I have a, a mix of advice, to be quite honest. Uh, I think it's, since I have some 20, 30 years of experience, uh, having been an entrepreneur myself, so, uh, I, ha I have some advice that I feel very strongly about. But first of all, you have to realize the capability of your brain. Too many times I see that entrepreneurs are very you know, focused in just their area. Now, the interesting thing about your brain is it doesn't work like a database. It actually, the more you put in your head, the more you can put in your head, which is, you know, very interesting. Um, so, Think, uh, so learn as much as you can always. Just adopt a, a mindset of um, learning forever. Secondly, you need to think about your health. 
Uh, because if you're not feeling good, you're not going to be able to run the company. You need to look at your stress level, uh, your, the food that you're eating, and you need to do exercise. You need to do these, think about these three things, very, very important. And then you will be, you will be fine. Uh, then thirdly, um, you need to learn about the new technologies that are out there. AI and blockchain. There's no way around it, in, in, in my opinion. Then, building up your company, you, the first thing you need to think about is who do you go in the boat? Who do you take with you in the boat? That's very important. That's what we look at as an investor. Uh, but you, need, you, you as a, the CEO, needs to look at that very, uh, as a, one of the most important points. And if you're not really sure, don't do it. Right? Um, have a flexible working relationship in, in the beginning and then you can tie the knots later on. Uh, fourth, you need to look at business ideas that would really disrupt. And, uh, and lastly, that will scale. Uh, because we only have a limited time on, on Earth and it's just become a little bit the norm that this is what everybody's looking for. If you're just looking at doing an IT infrastructure service, you're going to fight a lot of uh, other uh, competitors out there. You need to have something unique. And I always teach this. Operation is about doing things the right way. Strategy is about doing the right things. So on a last note, what I have seen is that a lot of, uh, a lot of startups, a lot of entrepreneurs are thinking too hard about just doing things right, which is an operational view. Whereas I think it's so much more important that you think strategically, meaning doing the right things. This is of course the harder part, but if you get that right, I'm sure you're going to fare well.